Hi, so in a previous video, I mentioned this stuff. This is uh, an activated carbon felt that we have. Now it is for sale in the shop and the link is in the description below. And all we do with this really to make a supercapacitor is cut it up and lay it in a supercapacitor shape. Now I didn't do that in the previous video, I just showed you a supercapacitor. So in this video, we're going to do a step-by-step -step on making a supercapacitor out of that stuff. All I did last time was show you this. Uh, where's 20 grams and people said how much uh, energy does it store well it's about seven watt hours a kilo and that's pretty good when you think about uh, a commercial supercapacitor has about three watt hours a kilo so really good actually and really stupidly simple to make now i'm going to use two bits of this you don't have to you can get one bit and cut it up you just make a smaller supercapacitor and the overall energy that you store on that supercapacitor will be less because it's smaller but the energy density is obviously the same because it's normalized for weight and what I need for a supercapacitor are two bits of carbon, two current collectors, a separator, an electrolyte and a case. To make the supercapacitor, then I just put my carbon onto my current collector. Now this current collector is stainless steel mesh, and you might notice a little bit of sellotape there on the tang. And the reason for that will actually become obvious later. So we just lay that down, take our piece there, pop it on top, our separator, pop that on top, our second bit of carbon, pop that on top, and our other current collector on top. And that is our supercapacitor. So like I say, absolutely stunningly easy to make. The only problem here now is putting on the electrolytes and casing it up. Now in order to case it, what I've been using is this stuff. This is actually a vacuum bag, and I've been sealing that up with this thing, which is a piece of kitchen equipment and it's a vacuum bag sealer. I paid £100 for that and it does a really good job but they do begin at sort of the £20-£30 mark so they're not really expensive bits of kit but they do a very nice job. In order to make our supercapacitor case all we really need to do is have some kind of guess at how big it is and you'll note I'm overlapping those bits of sellotape I talked about earlier popping on my ruler and I'm leaving a fair distance here because I have to poke it in and then slice that bit off. And that bit is open both ends. I put my hand through it. If I take my supercapacitor and wet it now with the electrolyte, which I'm going to do by dipping it in a bath of electrolyte salt. Now you have to remember the electrolyte salt is just that, earth salt. So I don't especially have to worry about my hands because all I've got here is salt water. So I pop my supercapacitor in there, pour on my salt water and just give it a little posh around so that it gets wet and we wet it throughout. We don't need it to be wet all the time, just damp. So I get that damp and you'll see the electrolyte salt soaking up into the supercapacitor carbon and into the separator. When I've dampened that down, then I can pull that through my plastic bag. Now if you want to be more accurate about this, you can make the thing up first, fill the electrolyte, weigh it, fill it with electrolyte, give it a little bit of time to soak, and then weigh it again so you get a fixed weight of electrolyte on there and a fixed weight of electrolyte is always going to be better. Let's give my bits of plastic a dry. And pull them down so that the sellotape is just at the level of the top of the plastic that we just cut. So our sellotape is level here with the top there. Make sure that none of the carbon or current collector is overhanging your separator, so the separator separates both of them. Pop it into your sealer. And however you use your sealer, seal the top. Now my sealer has a couple of operations on it. One is seal and one is pulse vacuum. So the first thing I'm going to do is seal it.
and that's why that bit of sellotape is there. That bit of sellotape now melts against the plastic and it melts into the weave of the stainless steel mesh that we put there and forms a really nice seal. Now I normally put two seals on that just to make sure the thing really is sealed. So we'll pop that in again. We end up with our sealed top with these are the current collector connectors that will actually clip to and we have an open bottom here bit of waste space there we're going to take that waste space up by seaming against it Then I can trim it. Now, all we have is that everything lined together. A nice open bottom there. And I'm going to vacuum seal that, which will clamp everything down. So it connects the current collectors to the carbon. And the strength of that connection is the vacuum. If I pop that in the bottom there, and like I said, I'm going to pulse vacuum it this time. any excess electrolyte you've got in there. Think they've done enough, we seal it. And there is our finished supercapacitor. Now I quite like to give it another seal at the bottom, so like at the top we've got a double seal at the bottom. And there is our symmetric supercapacitor. Now it really doesn't get much easier than that. So let's put a little bit of charge on that. Oh, I also want to weigh it, incidentally, so they get some idea of what the energy density is. And that weighs 79 grams. It doesn't matter which way around you connect it, obviously, and it charges because it's salt water but this one is actually 1.6 volts. So we put some charge onto that. There we go, that's actually drawing at 1.6 volts, 5.26 amps, which is quite a lot. Get our little motor so we can demonstrate it spinning. <coughs> So 
just disconnect that. And there's not enough on that yet. <laughs> So I've charged that at 6 volts, incidentally, is what I'm charging it at now. Because what we're looking at is the amount of current that we're putting on there. And we're forcing that in now at 6 volts. And we can feel like that actually doesn't get warm, even at that high voltage, incidentally. Let's try and see if we've got enough power to spin this on it. And there we go. So a few seconds at 6 volts will make that run. And that runs at about 1.5 volts although we can charge it much higher to get more charge on there more rapidly. So that really is um, the simplest way I can think of to make a supercapacitor of your own. Very, very simple. Use that carbon fibre, cut a couple of squares, use a bag serial, stick it in some bags, and you're going to have yourself actually quite a nice device. And you can play around with that a lot. Or you can do an awful lot with that in terms of education and with the kids so that you can explore energy storage. Like I say, all of this stuff is for sale on the shop. Please do support us and um, go and buy some bits and pieces because that's the greatest support that we can have. And thank you very much for taking the time to watch all of the videos.